Hello, welcome back to part five of my story, coming to you from my studio in downtown Nashville. And I feel like this might be the, the last part. It might not be, but I feel like it is. So let's see what happens. Um, so again, if you haven't watched parts one through four, you sh should, because it's all leading up to this in a, a specific sequence. So go back and watch those if you haven't. Please like and comment and all that YouTube stuff to help boost the... I don't know. Um, so anyway, we're right at the point. We're at a we're at a a shift in my life, and it was around turning forty. And I mentioned this in previous sections, where when I was younger, I was living with this constant fear and sort of existential stress that I was wasting my life, and I had I lived with this constant fear that someday I'd be like forty, broke. None of this entertainment stuff would have ever clicked. And then that's what happened. I became the man I feared I would become. I said that already in a previous section. But when I was 40, around five, maybe, was it exactly 40? 39, 40, I was sort of homeless. And I don't want to misuse that word because I wasn't like... Uh, I was, you know, I had a lot of friends who were helping me. I was doing a lot of couch surfing, but I had been touring these, these theater festivals, doing story, comedy and storytelling for like three or f maybe even four solid years. And in some ways it was a, a success because I was making money. I was doing it full time, but I was making just enough money to get to the next festival. So it was like, you know, some if I didn't sell super well, at a festival, it was hard to make it work. But I did make it work, but I lived like that for a long time with no home, uh, no like apartment back here in Nashville because I didn't want to spend the money for a place I would never be at. And at some point around 40, I was just tired. Uh, I My vision for exactly what I was doing was blurry. It had been a long, long road. I was just not not just physically tired, but mentally, spiritually exhausted. And um, I came back to Nashville. I sort of got off the runaway train of the theater festivals. I knew I had to, I was just getting so tired and it was just, just enough money to keep it going. I'm like, I have to, I can't live like this anymore. I'm lonely, no one will date me because <laughs> I'm just constantly like in my car off to the next place. And I was like, I don't want to live like this anymore. So I came back to Nashville. I did not have enough money to get an apartment. I, everything I owned was inside my car. And I was couch surfing for months. Broke. And uh, I took a job waiting tables. And waiting tables at 40 is hard on your body. <laughs> I don't know how people do it. It's a young person's job. I was like physically breaking myself just to get some money. Anyway, and then I sort of, I got on my feet. Um, I got into a, a relationship, started shifting my life and living differently. And I, um, I didn't cease to be an artist, but just, I was just tired of living so desperately. So I stabilized my life in a lot of uninteresting ways. We adopted cats, started living very quietly. And over maybe the next three or four years, my early 40s, my soul really settled and shifted. And I let go of a lot of things. And uh, it's hard to say there wasn't like a moment it's a slow evolution of just realizing like, oh, this, this feels better. Like the dream of my youth and the ambitions of my youth. Like I, like I told myself I was gonna dedicate my whole life, no matter what, never quit, chase your dreams. And that uh, sucked, didn't feel good anymore. I was tired and it's like, this is my life. What am I doing? I'm not happy. For what? So 
So I let a lot of things go. I was really settled. Settled is a, is a, has different meanings. When it just came out of my mouth, I don't mean settled like gave up in a gross way. I, meant, I mean settled, it's such an American thing. I mean my soul settled, like settled to the earth and rested. Um, and uh, still doing some pretty cool artistic things. I really started to focus on photography and filmmaking. I wrote a couple of films and made them. Um, I'll maybe talk about that in a future episode. I sold my movies to small distribution companies. I started like focusing on art that I could do in my house with my cats. Felt way better. And I really let go of like, I shifted my focus from making it to happiness. <laughs> and it was way better. And I was in that place for a long time. I'm still in that place. Uh, I feel like I healed and became whole. And, and quite honestly, my artistic self is still evolving and growing. I'm a far better, better artist today than I was 10 years ago, which is definitely 20 years ago. I know myself. I have a lot of experience and perspective about the world and the human experience that I try and express in my storytelling and my art. So if we flash back to about this time last year, right now it's, it's January 2nd, 2022. A year ago, wrapping up the holidays in a pandemic, so that sucked, but like <laughs> feeling uh, whole and good and settled and at peace making cool art, photography, films, a good place. And I was so f happy with how everything turned out. After all this experience and this wild adventure, it's like, I'm an artist, full time, paying the bills, like not in a desperate way, like feeling good. Um, and then, I signed up for TikTok and uh, with no intention of like it being anything, I signed up for an account to watch other people's videos, the Kevin James Thornton TikTok account. Um, but I was seeing what other people were doing and I was like, I could do that. I got a lot of stories to tell. Um, and then I blew up unexpectedly, very fast. I'll talk about this in a different video, kind of a separate story, but, um, and it felt like I slipped into a different dimension or something. I didn't need anything. I was in need of nothing else in life. And suddenly this massive audience was listening to me and waiting for more. And it's like, <laughs> My whole life, I was trying to find an audience and it never really clicked. And then suddenly, here you are. And um, I signed with an agency. We started experimenting with doing some live comedy club shows. And I was using a lot of, I'm, I'm still using a lot of my older material and mix it in, mixing it in with newer stuff. And it just suddenly clicked. I don't know why. I mean, I do and I don't. I do know why in the sense that, like, after all this, unexpectedly, I'm ready. I didn't know that I wasn't ready. But after I let go of all the panic and all the desperation, it put me in a different headspace. And I'm ready. And that's why it's happening now. And it's changing my whole life. Very, very, this has all has happened in the last year. And there's even new things, new doors opening that I can't quite talk about yet that are <laughs> incredible. But that's the journey. Um, and like I said at the beginning, I wanted to tell you my story uh, to inspire you and maybe relate with your own experience, but don't try and repeat my path. It's not possible. Um, it's your own path. 
you have to create it, whatever it is. It's not mine. Um, and my path is not yours. There's nothing repeatable here. And the moral of the story is not, and look, guys, after all, if you never give up, you'll get famous on TikTok just like Kevin. No, no, you won't. I mean, that's my path. The deeper story I hope you heard is that uh, it's your life. And uh, we're complex creatures, aren't we? Like sometimes to achieve peace and happiness, we have to challenge ourselves and fail and get up again and go through all that. But ultimately, as an artist, as a person, your focus should be on your happiness and being able to like fluidly evolve throughout the course of your life to create whatever that is. And if there's a good chance it'll end up not being anything like what you thought it would be when you first started out. And that's the end of the series. Thanks for watching. Hope you liked it.